Good morning and welcome once again to Holminster Church at Home. Hope that everyone is keeping well and safe during these difficult days. Today is the last Sunday of the church year and it's also the festival of Christ the King. Next week we begin the church year, the new church year, with, the, with Advent Sunday. But today we celebrate Christ the King. Now Christ the King is a festival that was established between the First and Second World Wars when people were turning away from faith. Secularism was becoming very popular and Pope Pius XI wanted to bring people back to know that Christ is the centre of our lives. And so this festival was established and has been celebrated every year since then. So today we turn to Christ as Christ the King, the King above all of us. So let us open in prayer. People of God, we are called to worship the King of Kings. Amen, we worship. We are called to worship the Lord of Lords. Amen, we worship. We are called to worship the name above all names. Amen. We worship. Amen. We worship. Gather us, O Christ our King, in heart and spirit and mind. Attune our senses that we may recognise what you want us to hear. May your Holy Spirit stir us, inspire strengthen and guide us. Gather us, Christ our King, and be present amongst us today. Amen. So our choir are going to sing that great traditional hymn, All People That On Earth Do Dwell.
So as we gather each in our own homes, let us come before God now to confess our wrongdoings. Almighty God, you sent your Son to be our teacher and saviour. Forgive us when we have not made you our priority, when we have dismissed your authority in our lives. Forgive us when we have tried to exert power over others, when we have made them feel hurt and inadequate. Forgive us when we have sought glory for ourselves instead of glorifying you. Help us to listen to your voice and seek your truth, that we may do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly towards your everlasting kingdom. Amen. So may the God of power and love forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So we now have our Bible reading, and after that, Dominic, Reverend Dominic, will be preaching for us. The reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, beginning to read at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. If you came into most churches in the Middle Ages, somewhere there would be a doom picture. Either over the door, or in a painting, or in the windows, this passage from Matthew would be depicted of the Last Judgment. Either side of Christ in glory would be the sheep and the goats. And later on, in churches like this, you would have had uh, preaching about this day of doom. It's of course where we get the word doomsday book from, this day of judgment. When uh, the Normans were so meticulous in counting everything, it felt like this final reckoning, this day of doom. And for many people, life was focused on this day in the future. 
this doomsday when they would stand before Christ and give an account of their lives. Would they be with the sheep or the goats? Would they be looking at an eternity of, of glory with the saints? Or were they going to be thrown into the pit of hell? And it was a focus of people's lives looking at this future day of judgment. Today, for most people, that day isn't the, the future they're looking at, but we still have faith in the future, a faith often in science. We're looking now in hope that these vaccines will work that there will be a time when there is no more COVID-19 holding us back. And we've seen enormous strides in the last 200 years in our understanding of the world through science. Some amazing and fantastic things have been done in communication, in medicine, in travel. And we've seen that at each stage, as we thought things were too difficult, too complicated, science has provided an answer. But it has also brought great suffering. One of the most chilling memorials I find in the Minster is to the guinea pigs those soldiers that had to stand and watch as nuclear explosions were done for the, for the British military with no PPE. What incredible destruction, what harm as well as good. One of the reasons that we're struggling in this current crisis is to do with the way that we've developed the world and exploited its resources. Climate change is something that humans, through our science, have brought about. So we've made enormous progress, but the human heart has not changed. We still have this capacity for tremendous good and tremendous destruction. And this parable is about this human heart and our motivations. On the surface, it looks simply about good deeds. Those who do good deeds will receive a reward. Those who don't will be punished for their neglect. Now sometimes when I meet people and they see the colour, they, they, they tell me all the good things that they've done. Oh, I, I, go, I help out at a charity shop. I've looked after my neighbour through the pandemic. Um, I've volunteered for the church, um, I give to the food bank, justifying themselves by all the things that they do. But there's something of a twist in this parable. Because when those that have, have been rewarded for their good deeds come to the king they say well when was it when did we do these things they weren't doing these good things because they were looking for some reward piling up the good so that they would deserve what they'd get it was because they were so focused 
on God and serving that they naturally and instinctively did these things even without recognizing it not looking for reward but looking to be faithful to God this goodness came from inside they weren't trying but it became instinctive and so let us pray that we become so focused on God in our lives that goodness just flows out of us and that we instinctively do what is right As we enter into a time of prayer, I invite you to reflect on what Dominic has shared, to reflect on God's word to us today. And as we reflect, we ask God to speak to us now afresh. Through prayer, we bring ourselves and our prayers to him today. Father, we know there is much need in our society in our communities, in our homes and in our hearts. Pour out your love and compassion on your people. Thank you, Lord, that in belonging to your kingdom, we receive gifts of generosity and compassion. We turn away from greed and selfish desires. So help us to seek and find the lost, to come alongside those who have little. And through our words and our actions, fill their hearts and fill our hearts with joy and love poured out in abundance. We give thanks today for the life of Elizabeth Armitage. Father, we thank you for the great encouragement Elizabeth brought to so many of us at the Minster, that she lived out that call to serve others, sometimes simply just sharing her, her deep love for you with that joyful smile. We thank you, Lord, for her radiant faith that shone so faithfully and strongly, despite the sufferings and the challenges that she faced. Surround us in our grief and encourage us to grow in faith as we celebrate her faithfulness to you. And as we pray for Elizabeth, we continue to pray for many others who have lost their lives to COVID-19, for those known to us, and for others who have come into the Minster to remember and pray for their loved ones. Comforting God, fill your people with your love. We pray for those in our world whose lives are being changed through COVID-19. We give thanks for the encouragement of potential vaccines and pray for people to act wisely and remember the most vulnerable as we wait. We ask for your presence, that you might bring a blessing to those who feel they have so little. We pray for our world today, especially those areas with rising political tensions and unrest. We pray for those areas with less advanced medical care during this pandemic. We ask for your hope for a future in which governments serve all people, no matter who they are or from where they come. We pray that divisions are softened and justice will come to those living in oppression throughout our world. We pray for the transition in Bolivia as a new president is inaugurated. We pray that there might be peace as new political leaders come into power across our world. We're so grateful, Lord, for the peace agreement that's been announced between Armenia and Azerbaijan to end the war. We're so grateful, God, for peacemakers. And we ask for your continued blessing as we seek peace to break division. And Lord, we pray for our city at this time. Jesus, we pray you'll comfort those living in fear, those living in loneliness and isolation. Help us as a church to share an offering of hope and lasting difference among our communities and among the media. We pray that your love will reach the most vulnerable and touch their hearts through our actions. We continue to pray for Hull Minster in these challenging times, for those who belong to the Minster to know the support, 
that we share as a church family at this time. We continue to pray for all, all of us who are affected by redundancy now or over the coming weeks. Renew us with your strength and purpose and direction as we seek our next steps in new employment. And Lord, in this month of prayer that the Archbishops have called us to partake in, as we enter the third week in this month of prayer, we pray a prayer for this week. Lord Jesus Christ, in these dark and difficult days, we turn our hearts to you. In ages past, you have delivered our nation from disaster. Do it again, we pray. Give wisdom beyond human wisdom to our leaders. Give strength beyond human strength to our NHS and our frontline workers. Give comfort beyond human comfort to the elderly and all those who grieve. Lord Jesus Christ, in these dark and difficult days, turn your face towards us. Have mercy upon us and heal our land, we pray. Amen. So as our Saviour taught us, we join together in our homes to pray the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we come to a time of notices. And could I say that after this service, you have just time to pick up a cup of coffee and join us at 11 o'clock uh, for coffee and chat. And we tried it last week and it's great to get a few people together and catch up and find out what people are doing. If you just want to listen in there and not have to comment, that's fine, just join us. You can do that by going onto the website and pressing the uh, conversations link and we hope to see you there 11 o'clock after this service. Also the church is open still on a Thursday, Friday and Saturday between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock for personal prayer for those who would like time to come and light a candle or pray on their own or with what chaplain that will be on duty. You're very welcome. Also at this time, if anyone is feeling really lonely and isolated as the nights draw in and um, we have very short days, if you would like to ring 01482 224460, our office number, we have lots of people who really enjoy chatting at the other end of a telephone. So don't feel lonely, don't feel isolated. Please do get in touch. We will get back to you very soon after you've left a message. And as usual, we mention giving to the church because even though we're in lockdown, this magnificent building, we have to keep it going and those who are working so hard to do that. So if you can give, thank you very much. The number, the text number is on the screen now and you also can do it by going onto the website and pressing the donations, the giving. Um, thank you very much and thank you to all those who are giving so generously during this time. I think that's all the notices for this week. Can, uh, we, now we're going to hear our music group who are going to sing a wonderful um, modern hymn, Creation Sings.
So as our service draws to a close, we ask for God's blessing on ourselves, on those that we love, and those that we struggle to love. Christ our King, reign in our lives as we go from this time of worship. May we carry with us the assurance of your presence and the knowledge of your glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.